Now that that's done, we finished all of the Cortos Island quests on normal, some of the town quests on Elite, and one of the t uh, quests on the island on Hard. So that's done. As you can see, the time that it took us to do it was about an hour and a half um, of questing time. This does uh, stop when you're in town for questing time. So let's say it took us two hours. That's not bad to get into level three and getting well set. Now the captain is super happy that we were able to finish everything so what he's going to do is he's actually going to give us an item that we can keep for the rest of the game that allows us to do one of two things now right now a smart choice would be to take the necklace of this is the protector's necklace what this does is it gives you an equipment bonus when you have the protector it gives you one two armor class strength and stuff like that we are actually supposed to take the devoted because this gives us plus 36 to our spell power what we're really going to do is we're going to take this one right here this one is one of the coolest things you can have this gives you either 10 to 35 spell points you can cast it twice per day so this gives you more spell points when you need them like if there's like a clutch thing this is one of the very few items that you can only get through here these are very rare don't think that you're going to find like 10 or 30 of these throughout the game you're not get this one right now if you're a spellcaster, if you're not a spellcaster, then whatever, do whatever the hell you want, do whatever thing you want. But if you are a spellcaster, get this right now because this will save your ass later on. And I mean it, it will save your ass later on. Eventually, you'll be at a point where you completely run out of spell points, and there's like five more five more monsters, and you gotta kill them. And yes, you get echo, echo of a uh, a voice, which means you get um SP regeneration, which is really cool, but it won't give you enough to cast like blur or something like that that costs like you know a bunch of points so what that does is it, it allows you to recast your buffs and then you can actually go fight everything um, it's really cool it's really cool to have that so now we are ready to level up to the next level as a cleric so for everybody watching thank you guys for watching this guide is pretty much going to come to an end because we are now level three we are going to be able to go to Cortos I to Cortos uh, we're going to be able to leave Quartos. If you want to do all these quests on Elite and get more items for free, but there is a much bigger world to be had. But with this knowledge that I've just given you, this guide, if you follow this guide, when you go to the next level, you will not suck. Um, unfortunately, a lot of times you meet people that get to like level 5 and 6, and they pretty much come to a complete halt because they're just dying really fast. They're not like, they're not killing anything. And they're not sustaining anything. And that's because they went with like a weird build. With this build, you're able to do both. You're able to kill stuff. And you're able to heal very well. So what we're going to do is we're going to pump up heal one more time. Then we're going to pump up concentration. And we're set. We're going to go next. So next, this gives us one more feat. Now the feats that you can get are really cool. You can get like extend spell. You can get heighten and improve and stuff like that. What we want. We want to come down and we want to close all the dumb feats. See, right now we would be able to get resilience. What this does is it gives us four all saves, but our constitution isn't at 13 base. It has to be base. We do have the one attack, but our constitution is high, and that's not really going to be an issue because we can heal ourselves. So we can get a weapon focus if we needed to. We can get spell focus, which is really, really good for us. But what we're going to do is we're going to come all the way down here and we're going to start from the bottom no 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 toughness is not a bad trade-off right here just so you can get a bunch more HP and this will actually stack with the other toughness that you have spell penetration you're not really gonna cast spells like that so that's not gonna be crazy uh, poison resist isn't a big issue because you're gonna have uh, you can buy a potion that negates all the freaking poison potions are really good remember that you're a cleric and you have money so potions are really good um, improved turning, improved shield bash, heightened spell. Now what you can get is you can get like extend spell, but realistically it's not going to be a big issue because you can go ahead and um, shrine and your character, your teammates are going to shrine anyway, so it's not a big issue. Die hard and discipline and stuff like that isn't really cool. The only ones that I think that are really decent right here is combat training and um, summoning. Because you're always going to summon a creature. You're always, you're, if, you're, if you're new and even later on, you're going to have hirelings no matter what. So if you have super badass hirelings, you're going to solo a lot of adventures. Um, especially if you're new. So this is not a bad thing to take right here. 
You guys see, I took it. I am going to take it. I'm going to go. The only other thing I can imagine that you could take right here that isn't such a big thing would be like maybe Quicken Spell. Um, but really, this is where you start customizing everything. The reason I do this is because this is an all-around thing. This is going to give my creature a lot more sustain. It's going to help me heal them less, which both my summon and my thing. And then later on, if I get lucky and I can like control somebody else's creature, we'll be set. So now we have level 2 spells. Level 2 spells give you another heal spell and it also gives you summon creature level 2. Hey, look at that. We get another one. It also gives you um, resist energy, which is really good. Then you get other really cool spells. You get all the cool spells at that. So now we are complete. We are at the next level. Let me show you guys what this does. So now my base attack is at plus 2. So my attack is getting pretty decent. Uh, my reflex is finally went to 1. Yay. Look how many HP we got. So now we're going to be closer to, I'm sorry, SP. Now we're going to be closer to the fifth, to the two, 250. HP, we're going to be up to around, uh, we're going to be around 80. Let's actually see what we're going to look like. Oh, so we're one away from 80. That's not bad. We have action points now. So let's go ahead and do the action points for you guys. So now this is where you can actually start doing a little bit of tweaks. So right here, you get a couple of really cool things. This target and it gains a uh, Spell points and ability, and you can't target it yourself. So if you're with like a, a spellcaster, you can actually use this on them and give them spell points. Um, this is really cool when you max this out and you're with like a sorcerer or something like that. Somebody that's like spamming spells and they run out of SP, you can give this to them and they're gonna love you. What I can also do is I can get this right here. What this does is it removes all diseases and poisons from your target. Okay, that's really cool. What else can we get here? Dispels magic and what am I looking for? Ah, this right here is really cool. Your target heals for one d4 every two seconds based on your heal skill. We press character and we go to skills. Our heal right now is at 10. That's not bad, guys. That's not bad. That means that I'm that if I get this right here, uh, this one. I'll be able to hook up my teammates with a really good thing. Now, this is where you actually start, you know, figure out what you want to do. You can actually get an action boost at this thing, which will give you your um, strength. You can actually go up this tree and get greater heroism, which is a really, really, really good spell later on. That is really good to have for all your, for all your things. Um, personally, I don't know what I want. So what this does is it gives you plus one to your enhancement bonus. When wielding your favorite weapon, I'm gonna be doing that. So let's go ahead and give plus two on my attack on my weapon. What does this give me? Another one to my weapon. Awesome. So what I did is I actually went with um. You gain an insight bonus to strength equal to your charisma modifier. Really. So, Divine Might means that you don't actually have to spam everything into Strength. You can actually put it into Wisdom. And what this does is it gives you an Insight Bonus to Strength equal to your Charisma Modifier. So, hmm. Let me see something. What's my Strength right now? My Charisma Modifier is actually bad, so this wouldn't help. But if my Charisma Modifier was like a 2, I would get plus 2 to Strength, which... Isn't a bad trade-off, but realistically right now, I don't need it. But later on, when my charisma... Is this base, though? So later on, when I get an item that gives me, like, plus five or six charisma, I can actually use this. And when I cast Greater Heroism on myself, which gives me plus four to... Um, No, this gives me temporary hit points. I'm thinking of uh, Eagle Splendor. That's what I'm thinking of. That'll actually give me a boost to that. So I can do that. Um, you can read what these all do and stuff like that. I'm actually just going to go with the melee damage. Just because I feel that since I'm soloing, I want to be pretty strong and I want to be able to hit everything. So I'm going to show you guys what this looks like. So let's go accept. Now you can reset the tree. It just goes like this and it'll tell you if you want to reset this, you have to pay monies. 
we have a bunch of money so it's completely fine so now let's go to inventory let me show you guys my weapon look at my bonus <laughs> my bonus is at plus nine so I have plus nine to attack <laughs> That is freaking epic. Now, since we are at level 3, let's find those booty doodles. Plus 3 to strength. So now we can actually put these right. Let's actually move these over. We'll put the potion right here. So now I can equip the boots. Oh! My bonus went to 10. So I get plus 10 to my attack rolls. And I do believe that my damage is pretty pretty well off um pretty good as far as uh bonuses goes um plus 10 is really really good for damage and stuff like that um these i believe are both level 4 yeah these are level 4 but this right here is freaking epic oh my gosh i love this i really do love this what belt we have here we have the HP belt we have the boots and then the other boots are already equipped it do we have any other items that I can throw on my buddy we have this necklace now which is really cool um so if you put on heavy armor this actually sucks for a half plate you get spell failure but for a cleric you actually don't get spell failure so we can actually equip this armor. Let me show you guys. I have no spell failure. So we can actually equip this armor, which is considered heavy armor, and be completely fine. The only thing that we do is we get armor penalty checks, which is like when we're trying to hide and stuff like that. But my armor class is pretty decent. And now let me show you guys the other thing, why I love the fact that you can solo with clerics. And why I feel clerics are such a good class to start off with. So now we have, we want to come in here. Let's go have a seat on one of these. Let's just sit on the table. Sit. Alright, so now when we go to character, if we go to uh, enhancements, we have um, Smite Foe. Pretty much what this does is it smites your foe with a night attack. That does two additional damage. Oh, awesome. Let's put that in our thing. We can actually switch that with command because command right now isn't going to be that cool, which means let's go to our spells. Command, be gone. All right. So what's divine favor do? Divine favor gives strength, wisdom, dexterity called upon you gain one luck bonus to weapon attacks and damage. For how long? It don't. It's only for forty seconds. So this is more like a you know in and out type deal. But 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 we have bless. We can give ourselves shield of faith, which gives us plus two to deflection bonus awesome let's take that we still have our summon doggy so let's see what what's in level two for us so we get our cure moderate wounds which we're actually going to replace that one with as a standard spell we can move that one out of the way and we get a couple of other things now we have an eight spell we have uh bears and nerds we have bull strength huh bull strength is not bad and i'll show you guys right now what this um needs one of the components i'll show you guys where you can buy the components so you guys don't get lost we get fine trap. Unfortunately, we don't have a disabled trap thingy, but we do get fine trap. We get lesser restoration, and then we get what I feel is the best one that you can get. This is resist energy. Resist energy is epic. I'm actually gonna have to do a new page for a new one for resist energy. Let's do another pop out. Let me show you guys how awesome resist energy is. We'll put resist energy right here. We'll we'll get back to that. And then right here, you can pretty much just figure out what you want to do next. Um, if you're going to solo a lot of quests and a lot of things like that, you can do um, Bull Strength, which is really good because this, cast, this lasts for 5 minutes. You can cast this on yourself, on your hiring, and on your summon. And you have to remember that your summon already comes with an equip with plus 4, and your, your hiring does as well. So you can actually beef them up and beef yourself up and get a lot more uh, strength out of it. Or you can get Aid, which gives everybody a little bit of HP. This is where you can start figuring out what you want to do personally 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 what i'm thinking is if you want to do crowd control you get sound burst because sound burst is really good it's an evocation evocation spell which has a save of 16 
and what it does is it does damage to an AoE, it does AoE damage, and on top of that it has a chance to stun the enemies for 6 seconds. They have to do a save uh, of, yeah, a save of fortitude, if they don't, if they don't pass the save they get stunned for 6 seconds and that's it, they're stuck. Hey look at that, they're actually tycoons of tomorrow, no I don't want to join your guild, thank you very much though. And the reason he wants me to join my, his guild is because I'm a cleric. Clerics are freaking epic. Everybody wants wants a cleric in their guild because that means that they can call upon them like, Hey, you want to come help me do this quest real fast? Really cool. Now, Lesser Restoration is really good because there's start, like, some skills and stuff like that start to happen. So this would be like the utility one where like you want to save, um, where you want to like heal and stuff like that. Or you could go with the offensive one of right here. This really just depends on you. I'm going to go with the offensive one just because I want to show you guys where you can buy the loot stuff for that. So we're going to go ahead and... Oh, let me show you guys what this does. So if you double click on this, this is the same thing as a summon creature. You can actually drop these down. We're going to do code. Let's put Sonic over here. I'm going to put these by the ones that I feel are the most important to the least important. And bio. Actually, I feel poison is more than cold. No, bro. So now, let's go to our other spells. Let's go to all our spells, actually. So now we actually have a page right here where we can do everything for our spells. So let's go to single target spells. Oh, crap. No. Damn it. I accidentally got rid of it completely. And then we'll do mass target spells. Later on you get more mass target spells, which pretty much means that you can um you can use those however the hell you want. I'm gonna set these up like this. So I have all the spells. The only one I don't have is this one because I already have this one. I actually kicked this one to the curb because uh, if I'm gonna heal somebody, I'm gonna wait till I need to heal them for a little bit more. I'm not gonna waste like a low level on them. So let me show you guys what this looks like. So you cast Bless. You can't cast it. We don't have Pinch of Fine Time. But we can cast this. This right here. This right here. Now this is where Quicken Spell kind of comes into play. But the only time you really have to cast these on a bunch of people is when you come to an area where like there's a rogue. Uh, where there's a rogue and you can't disable the trap. And he's like, oh crap, there's a trap right here guys, but I can't disable it. We're probably going to die. Then you go, what kind of a trap is this? Poison. Alright, here, let me give you, let me give everybody poison resist. And you guys go through the trap one at a time. So you give them poison resist, then you click on them. And when they go through, you um, go ahead and uh, heal them as soon as they take like the first little bit of damage. So what that does is it, it helps them a lot. You can actually cast like 8 on them too. So that's where like the spells, you kind of like set them up to what's going on. Like if you have a party that sucks and you need to carry the team a lot, that's what you do. If you have a party that doesn't suck and they're doing pretty decent, um, then you don't need to do that and worry about that. So here we are at the harbor. The harbor is really cool. Pretty much all the quests in this area are all level 2 quests. There's some chains and stuff like that that you need to focus on. And there's a couple of quests in the taverns. The main tavern that you want to talk to is right here. There's a quest in the tavern. And then there's some really, like, Oh, damn it. I'm over here talking that I'm not paying attention. There's some solo adventure quests, and then there's a there's an area right here. This is the the hills. You can go in there. There's like a level 4 quest. This guy right here is going to be your new best friend. He sells hirelings that are level 3 and up. So, let's buy a level 3 hireling. Let's get a barb. And the other one that we want to get is we actually want to get a favorite soul. The reason we want to get a favorite soul is because they cast um spells and stuff like that. Nimbus of Light, they have Cure Wounds, so if you're going to go on a quest with your teammates and they're like, shit, we need another healer, um, here, let me bring, let me bring this guy, and you bring him and they're like, oh, cool, Favorite Soul. Favorite Souls are really good when they can heal, um, and as far as those goes, they have really good defense, they have really good offense, those are really good characters to have as hirelings. Now, the cool thing is, as a hireling, you can actually summon some crazy-ass, like, some crazy-ass characters, but that's... That just goes with that. So the circles right here are the shops. You can go to Hammer and Chase. Right here you can actually buy potions and stuff like that. But you can't use this one and you cannot use um you can use this one, spell ingredients and stuff like that, but I skip them 
and I go to the marketplace pretty much the marketplace is exactly what it sounds like it's an area where you can just buy a bunch of stuff and I mean a bunch of stuff I'm talking like a buttload there's a buttload of vendor shares and a lot of them are freaking like hidden away in like their own little nooks and corners and stuff like that so I'm going to show you guys a couple of important things that you should know about the marketplace when you do get to this area one underneath right here there are vendors talk to these guys because these guys actually sell some pretty decent stuff these are the uh, the main vendors that you want to talk to and then this guy right here remember this guy he's the coin lord patron after you do a certain amount of quests in the game you get um, favor points. Favor points will entitle you to do really cool things. I'll show you guys. So when you press P, this shows you your quests and adventures and stuff like that. If you press L, this will show you what quests you're currently activating and doing and what's going on. You can abandon quests or you can overlook things um, and stuff like that. Now, I, I'm not, I didn't show you guys this in the beginning because I didn't want to overwhelm you. As far as favor points go, you can actually click this right here. And you can see how much favor you've been earning for the quest, or you can press Patreons, and this will show you how much favor you've earned for every every single um, Patreon or house. Now, on the flip side, this also shows you when you get a reward for them. So right here at 75, it'll tell you, uh, Coinlands are noble, blah 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 blah. Delary, delary, Coinlands are not for fair. And they pretty much tell you like their background stuff like that. And then right here where it says a total favor, this tells you the total favor for the entire server. And it'll tell you what reward you get on the right hand side. So at 400 favor, after you do all the quests on Elite and do uh, pretty much once you level up to like level 10, you unlock a drow. A drow. Pretty much you get mail. And it'll tell you that in the oh crap the marketplace. Technically, like if this were the marketplace and you were looking at it like coming in through this door, and this were the door on the other side, he would be like right here in this area. There's a drow camp. You talk to the drow, and then they go, you know what? You've proved yourself as a loyal hero to the people. We like the fact that you've done so much stuff. We're gonna unlock a drow character for you. So you could actually use this cleric, get yourself to like level nine or ten. Once you get like a bunch of money, a bunch of items and stuff like that, you're going to find items for other characters unfortunately too. Well, you can get like a badass drow character and then you can use that as like a spellcaster and stuff like that. So right here you have my favorite vendor, which is this guy right here. This is a potion vendor that sells awesome ass potions for low level characters. I'm a low level character. So let me show you guys how this works. Let's sell that. Oh, this is the, I didn't even realize I had this. Um, actually, the one that I have does more damage. We're going to keep that one for now. Oh, I should have blocked that. Let's sell the gems. Potions of Cure Moderate Wounds. We're going to keep that. Oh, that's it. We actually didn't have that much junk to sell. I need to lock this necklace right now. Boom. Lock that necklace. All right, we're good. Now, there's a little bit of a troll thing that you can do. This is completely troll, but if you want to, you can feel free to do this. At this point, once you get that locket, you can actually use your heart and re-level everything and uh, get your character back to the beginning. What it does is it respects your character. Um, and you might actually, I don't think you can do that. So, do that. Okay. So, what you can do is you can actually buy, you can buy aid. So, if say you're a fighter and you like the aid, but you don't like the fact that you have to, like, farm these. You don't have to. You don't have to have 15 of those. You can buy a potion of aid and you're set. You can buy a potion of bark skin. Bark skin is actually really decent. Now, these potions aren't cheap. I'm not saying they're completely cheap, but for your level, they are freaking viable as crap. They're freaking viable as crap. This is where you buy potions of um, repair. This is for the Warforge characters. Um, they can heal themselves now with their own potions, which is really good. Uh, pushes a bear endurance pretty much this gives you um constitution these are kind of like you know not that cool potion of bliss is actually really good to have for yourself this uh cast on yourself it's not that expensive and you're cool and then you get some of the other really cool potions like if you like if you're if you're not a caster if you're a fighter and you're like damn it every once in a while i need this i need strength boost all right we'll go ahead and get a strength boost look at this right here potion of cure moderate wounds oh my god you can buy these you don't have to rely on another class. So of course clerics are really good to have with you if you're a, if you're a newcomer.
but later on once you have money your second character once you have a bunch of money you can actually equip him with a bunch of potions and maybe wands wands are really good too I'm going to show you guys the wands right now and you can skip all the crazy stuff and the reason why I waited to show you guys this is because I wanted you guys to kind of learn of course if you watch this complete tutorial and you get to this point you can actually come over here and buy these potions right off the bat of course you need the money for it but these are really good potions to have just in case potion of jumping is really good and now these are potions that actually help your um your spell power so what this does is it gives me five spell power in three minutes to my heal spell then of course you can use them for like acid and stuff like that freeze fire um repair and stuff like that these are really more like later on like those are for like really really crazy people that want to like for sure max everything out if you're gonna duel people this is really good um then you have uh mage armor if you don't have anything to cast mage armor you can actually just buy a potion bam it's not even that expensive too so you don't even have to have the spell mage armor you can actually buy the potion and just have like the potion just like have like four or five potions potions drink pretty fast so you can easily use them remember i said you don't need the neutralized poison bam buy three of those now we have neutralized poison done now you can use acid resist what this does is it will actually give you the same thing that we have as far as resist energy and you can do one for every single one so if you don't have it feel free show the faith is epic it gives you this only lasts for one minute unfortunately but it does give you the deflection bonus so these are like little little things that you can use now there are more potion vendors in the world but this is the one that I like the most off the bat one vendors are really really crazy because they sell pretty much all the ones that you want one of aid it doesn't cost as much as a potion so I can actually get this one and if I need to I can equip this this is for like casters and stuff like that the ones for um, casters are cheaper than the potions but if you can't use these um, then you're screwed now you can get your use magic device spell pretty high up so you can use these out as a fighter and stuff like that but I wouldn't recommend it I would just get the potions um, now for us we cannot really cast the um, the damage ones because that's not our, our, our our thing but we can cast some of them which are really really cool and I can get a wand of cure moderate wound so if I want to save my SP I can actually buy this and use this to heal everybody and use my SP for say maybe damage spells maybe you want to be more of a combat type deal and you want to focus everything on damaging and when people need to heal you don't want to actually like have to heal them so what you can do is you can actually equip one of these and have weapon sets. I haven't showed you guys the weapon sets, have I? So weapon sets are pretty basic. You get this set, you put it right there, and then you put this one right there, and then you get this one, and you put it right there. And now you have a weapon set. If you have a blank weapon set, you get this right here. Put that right there. So now that weapon set gets equipped. This weapon set gets equipped. You can remove them from here, or you can get these and remove them completely from here, and then those blank, then this one stays there. So you can actually have 10 different weapon sets plus you can get a bunch more so that's the really cool part about having all these um wands and stuff like that so you can actually have your wand cast it and while you're casting it you can still have your um shield equipped it or you can have like a bow equipped it and then you can go from your bow to your weapon so you can do like range attacks until they get close to you that's later on that's what that i'm telling you guys all this now because i don't want you guys to get overwhelmed that's something i'm actually gonna put right there Bam. Go ahead and give ourselves SP if we need it. What is this one? Oh, it's junk. Get rid of that. Oh, we still haven't used this. I'm going to actually save this. No need to use it. This right here is really cool. This is Heart of uh, Lesser Heart of Wood. What this does is it lets you um it lets you reincarnate. What it does is It lets you reincarnate your character so when you get to like level 20 you can actually do true reincarnation and with this right here it pretty much lets you do a really really cool thing where you can like rebuild your character um, and get a second life and with second life you get second life feats you get second life bonuses if you find a book that gives you say plus one to like your strength or plus one to your dexterity and then you get a plus two to your dexterity your next character your next life you can replay the entire game through but it'll be a second life so you're stronger you're better and your character is overall 
way better. Which most of the time you need to get into the epic quest and the epic things because over there it gets really crazy. And sometimes like you play a character and you're like, damn, this was a really good cleric. And I'm really happy that this character has so many like extra things and the items and stuff like that. I want a new character, but I really don't want to like, I want to like, I want to use like the books that I had on this one. And I don't want to have to like ruin that. Okay, well, all the books you get on this character, you can do something. You can actually save them. Give them to the next character you build. Say you build the next uh, draw character. You can give him all the books, level him up to 20, and then use his wood to do your reincarnation for your true reincarnation. And guess what? You're going to just have a badass character. And a lot of people are like on the third and fourth lives just because once you get your first life, and once you get to level 20 once, it's really easy to get there again. Um, and that's just the rule, unfortunately. Like, you're really just blocked by what you don't know, unfortunately, in this game. What I'm going to do, or what I just did, is I just taught you how to get your ass from 0 to 3. Cake. It's a cakewalk. It's a cakewalk. And because you, you did so well in those three first levels, you have the ability to just go ham now. And the next two, three levels are going to be really easy. You're going to find a bunch of parties doing quests right now so I can actually go join this guy and go do all his quests and go oh do you want me to open them on hard yeah let's do them on hard you get more experience I get more experience we're together so we can do them we can do them as a team oh he's a rogue too so you can open up all the locks or I'm a level three now so I can start doing these I can start joining these people uh, harbor elites there we go I would join this guy right here and just tag along with him and do all the harbor quests on elite and just let him lead the way. I would just heal him and make sure he's safe. I would have my hireling with me, my pet with me, and I'll be a one man army. Which means you'll be a one man army. So you'll be able to do everything I'm doing. Plus, when it's just one person, they might be nice enough and tell you this is what we need to do here, this is what we need to do there. Please try not to focus, you know, don't do this, don't do that, don't go in there, there's a trap right there. This is where you start to learn the other quests. And if you don't want to do that, do them by yourself. Nobody's gonna stop you. You have a character that can do pretty much every quest in here by themselves because you can heal yourself you won't die and even if you don't have this character I've shown you how to get one of the characters that will teach you how to do this and then later on once you know all these things I'm gonna do more guides for like the harder characters to like level up and do like that and kinda of focus more like for me the one of the hardest characters to level up to be honest um, is a sorcerer just because they're freaking crazy they're so like you gotta focus on either doing some crazy damage and you gotta do it right. Sorcerers are really, really like they're they're tricky and they're touchy, which I love sorcerers. And you'll notice that it's not really me saying that, it's the game saying that. When you go to character creation, sorcerers say challenging. I love that. I love a challenge. I love a challenge. But there we go. We're set. We're gonna do that. If you wanna buy wands, you can buy wands. If you need to buy I'm sorry, the, the other components are right here. Sorcerer scroll vendors. Oh, we can inscribe scrolls too. Remember? Oh no, we can't. We're a freaking we're a cleric. I'm sorry, but we can use some of these scrolls. We can cause fear. We can use them all, unfortunately, but we can use protect against evil. Now these aren't that really cool, but later on when you can get the mass scroll, you can get those. And this is a guy I wanted to show you guys. This guy sells everything we need. So to summon to activate this, you need pinches of bull dung. Okay, well. Find sun. Wait. What? I need. Oh, ominous dust. Wait, arcane. I'm sorry. I'm freaking thinking arcane. I need to go to the divine. There we go. So this is the divine scroll vendor. Sorry, I'm freaking going left and right here. So guess what? I don't have a summon monster level two. And they don't really sell him here, do they? No, but they do sell him in other stores. So don't think that just because they don't sell him here, you can't buy him. You can actually go to the other, the other houses, the houses that I would recommend to buy scrolls. And this is where you can do this on your own, because I'm not gonna walk you guys through this. Is House P, which is should be okay. So this is House P. House P has two shops that sell things. Uh, Objects Desired is the one that you want to go to in this house. Um, and then House J is, in my opinion. They sell the best potions. This is where you buy the best materials for like casting spells. This is where you buy the material for um, casting iron uh, stone skin, 
which is really hard to find. Uh, it's in this house. It's the one right next to the teleporter. There's a potion vendor in there. He sells really good potions too. Um, and then there's also a mage thing right here where you can buy a lot of really cool mage things. Now there is one more store and I believe it is in the house. Uh, I think actually, I think those are the only two that actually sell really good stuff. I think there's one more in house, I want to say house K, but I don't remember. Just make sure you go to those two houses. I don't remember where the other one is. The portable hole is really hard to get to, but if you can get to the portable hole too, uh, that is a really good place to buy stuff, but you can't just get there. I think you have to teleport there or have a waypoint or whatever the hell. But anyways, those two other houses that you want to go buy all the other stuff at, they sell, um, in this house they sell level 3 scrolls so you can actually use level 3 scrolls right now um, unfortunately you won't cast them for sure but you can and then this is the guy that sells what we need to buy and then they sell better wands over there too so pinches alright so let's go ahead oh cancel wrong one let's go like this let's add what what we can do that that's right we just did that you can do that and now the First, I would recommend you buy that, and then with the rest of the money, you can buy scroll, you can buy wands, you can buy scrolls, or you can buy potions. You can go talk to the people downstairs. Oh, and the other hirelings, let me show you guys right now. Because we are. Damn it, I keep thinking that that's still my boost. The other hirelings are right here. This is where you get the other hirelings. This guy sells level 4 and up, uh, all the way up to level 20. The level 20 hirelings are epic. They are so awesome. Oh my gosh, you guys do not understand how badass a level 20 cleric hirelings is. Now, hirelings are kind of dumb in the fact that they they don't actually have like the best AI. But realistically, 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 most of the time, these guys are better than people you play with. So, a lot of people say hirelings are stupid and they mess up. Yes, sometimes they are stupid and sometimes they do mess up. But I play with people that are way worse, and when you get to a level like this, sometimes I'd rather have a freaking cleric hireling with me than an, uh, another ranger that does absolutely no damage and doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Um, usually when you get to this level, though, you get people that are pretty strong, but unfortunately, sometimes you got to do quests on your, by yourself, and hirelings are really good. Of course, we do have the plus to hirelings, so our hirelings are a lot stronger. This guy can cast Resurrection, which means if you die, he can heal you again. If he dies, you can heal him, and he has Divine Vitality. This is one of the best ones for casters because he can replenish your SP. Then you have Epic Hirings. Epic Hirings, show me who is available. These are level 20s, but you can also get level 25s. These are the badass crazy ones. Unfortunately, you can't use these until you get to a minimum level, but <laughs> they sell them at this level for a reason. All right. Now, over here, you have the vendors that I was talking about. Magical clothing, a very nice stock of items between 8,000 and ta -da -da. All right, let's see what we got here. Belt of speed, actually that's not a bad belt. Swimming, belt of protection, what the hell? To the deflection bonus, this is, this, this is what I was talking about. Now you gotta have some money to come over here and barter with these guys. Or, or you know, do stuff like that, but I can actually get Fortitude Boots of Halide. What this does is it reduces the fact that I will not get sneak attacked. They will not bypass my freaking thing, so I can just take regular damage versus sneak attack critical damage. And I get first five. This is really, this is what I was saying. Like, you don't have to always find everything. You can actually buy a lot of really, really cool stuff. Magical Jewel Broker. Okay, what does this guy sell? Oh, glasses, braces. Wow, so if you have like a really, really bad, like, bad character and you need, say, intelligence, boom, there's a necklace of intelligence. You don't have to find it. You can actually buy it from right here. Now, there is one thing that I haven't gone over, and I'm going to go over that last right before I cut this video, and I say thank you guys for watching, and this is it. Look at this guy. This guy sells a level 25 belt that gives you 10 to armor. That's really good. Level 5, this is a good belt. Um, unfortunately, I can't wear a lot of these guys' items, but some of the items I can wear. And you, if you really need to get like a little bit more, oh my God, this is a these are really good boots. By the way, these are really good boots. You can go in here and you can try to see if you can't find something uh, that's good for you. Um, you can kind of just go through and say, damn it, I really need that. You can pretty much just assume that the items that cost less are really better. So this right here. 
if you don't have um a mage uh spell to um mage armor you can actually use this and consider this to be your armor with robes and you'll get plus four to your armor class which isn't bad um i wouldn't recommend you do that unless you have like deflection bonus added to this or something like that but that's not bad these right here are actually really good plus three to your constitution and it gives you um dodge these are actually really good i would buy these on my level 13 character and you can build around these too all right so that's done you guys saw the plus seven to charisma that's a freaking crazy ass item you can come talk to these guys over here clothing broker these guys are like not as crazy um you can get into guilds and stuff like that 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 is a whole different arsenal there are guys here i'm gonna go over here and show you guys the auction guy you don't actually have to go to him but personally to join his party no thank you but no thank you i do not want to join a party pretty much he's gonna go do a quest that he probably tried to solo by himself and he couldn't do it and he's like damn it i need a cleric so you can either talk to the guy to open the auction house or you can go right here and find the auction house which is nowhere to be found options gameplay key mapping which one is the auction house is it chart exchange ah okay so it is chart okay so this is the auction house pretty much you can buy stuff based on whatever level you want so right here let's go like this i am a level three i need to buy armor i want heavy armor search nobody's selling heavy armor really uh what about delete level four search huh. What about level five? What the hell's going on here? Oh, so there is none. Somebody is selling medium armor. Oh wait, I'm going. I'm I'm in shards. I'm sorry. I need to go to. Uh, how do I go to the regular auction house? Yeah, I'm in the shard one. That's why. Okay. So I don't want that. I actually want the regular auction house. There we go. This is the one that I want. I'm sorry. So that's why I came over here. So let's go to level 3 again. Let's press search. There we go. So level 3 items. Let's go to armor. Press search. Look at this. I could actually buy some armor. Now you can also change it to name. Now what I really love about the fact that you can change it to name is that it adds it by plus 1, plus 2. And then in the end you get like the really, really cool stuff. So this is a level 2 that gives me... It's craftable. Wow, this is actually pretty decent. Uh, some of these are very expensive, but look, this plus two half plate is much better than what I have equipped it right now, and I could buy this for two hundred. I could buy it out for that much. Now, what, sometimes the buyout doesn't click, so you have to go up and then down, and then you can buy it out. I'm gonna buy this out just so I can show you guys how this works. So when you buy something out, you'll notice that you get mail. So to get to your mailbox, you go to right here. Um, actually, I think you actually have to go to your mailbox. You go over here, you go to your mailbox, auction one, you double click to open that. This will open up right here. That's how your auction blah 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 has been won. And the reason it won is because I did buy out. Now you can bid, of course. We do that. Once you do detach, you open up your inventory and it's glowing. Let's equip that new armor. Let's open up our character so we can see the difference between bad and good. Ta da! Yeah, yeah. Now, I would suggest you don't spend too much time here, but unfortunately, this this damn thing can get super addicting, especially if you go like this. All items. If you go like this, you can actually get super addicted. Plus one tome to health. Um, plus one tome to intelligence. This is what I mean by getting your character super decked out. Now these are actually really expensive. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go like that. I'm going to actually customize it to buy out potion of shield of faith um 
it costs about this cost about thirty something. Uh, you can actually go like this and actually start getting some crazy, crazy stuff for a really good thing. Swimming, ring of dodge. This is where you actually just go like you just start realizing how much money you have. We only have four hundred now, but four hundred will give us uh, a ring of dodge. It's actually better than what we have. Let's go ahead and buy that ring of dodge. I don't think I have another dodge item, do I? My dodge is at two. Oh, I already have a dodge item. What the hell? Where's my dodge item? I don't know. I'm going crazy. Detach. And let's put this ring on with this ring. Now let's check our dodge again. Oh, there we go. My dodge chance max is 2%. So right now my dodge is at 2%. There we go. That makes perfect sense. Now you're only allowed to have a certain amount of dodge because of your character class. And that's because it the game doesn't want you to like be crazy OP. Actually, I don't know why the hell it does that. Um, but look, my defense chance at this level is at 71 because of my armor rating. But if I go like this, it's at 65. I'm sorry, I said 6. Now it's at 65. My armor class is at 25 for a level 3. That's not bad because I'm going to be fighting things that don't. Ha I'm practically not going to get hit. So once I get to the next level and I can put on that really, really cool thing, which is a shield that gives me the, um, the miss. Things are gonna be like dying like crazy. Plus, I get one plus. I get plus one insight bonus to a bunch of stuff. And if you notice, my um my stuff does not have an insight bonus to it. I have a uh I have a base. I have a constitution modifier, and that's it. I don't have any real pluses to these. Um, to any of these. this does have an en enhancement, so you can do enchantment bonuses and resistant bonuses and the last one is going to be a luck bonus or an insight bonus so there's different bonuses you can stack the different bonuses this would be considered an insight bonus so it's different than the enhancement bonus so these two can stack together now you can't stack the same bonus over and over but you can stack different bonuses which is really really good to know um, but stacking stuff like that you just want to make sure that you're not stacking items Unless both of the items that you have on are like really the best ones that you can get. Uh, usually when items have like two different effects, if they're stacking one effect, it's fine. Just don't worry about it. Worry about the secondary effect. But you don't want to have uh, like a hat and goggles that both give you plus three to charisma or plus four to strength. Because realistically, you're only going to get the benefit out of one of them. Now, that doesn't mean you want to pick one and throw the other one away. You want to save one. You want to save them both until you can replace one. So that's where the idea, that's why I have like, some of these items that are still from like way over there like so that's why I still have um where are those damn bracers oh that's why I still have these bracers because I might come across something that gives me axe block and I might be able to switch those out with these right here and then guess what I get more reduction of damage which is really really cool and that's going to be right here so I already have the one to our reduction and I have four to slicing weapons but if I get lucky and I get like another one I would love to have minus 4 to all of these to be completely honest. I think that's really good. I would love my dodge chance to be a lot higher, but later on we'll be able to cast blur, so that's not going to be an issue. But there we go, guys. That's enough rambling. I feel that this is a good enough guide for everybody to follow, to be set with. I've showed you how to do the beginning quest. Those quests, you can do them the way I did them, I and you don't even have to have a cleric. As you can see, I didn't even end up having to heal myself. To the extent where potions wouldn't have been able to sustain me. My armor wasn't really that crazy because I didn't buy anything special. I didn't transfer money to from one account to another account to make myself that much OP. I didn't give myself any extra. Everything I did and every every piece of item I have, except for like this ring there and like the stuff that I recently, recently just bought, is everything that I found from chests. And I didn't even loot all the chests to be completely honest. I skipped a bunch of chests. I did. I skipped a bunch of chests. I didn't farm quests. I didn't do quests more than once. Um, you can actually do a, like the town quest on Elite. Uh, you can do, like I said, you can do them a couple more times just so you can get the chest uh, and try to get some better loot. But 
realistically, if you do all the town quests and you do all the quests out in the island, including um, Misery's Peak three times, Misery's Peak the third time doesn't actually give you that uh, the third the the item from the captain. You only get that item once, so if you only do that once, that's fine. But the other quests do give you uh, the item over and over, so you can actually stack some of those items. And then once you get to um, 145 uh, coin lord quest, and coin lords are the ones that have the little cups. Once you do their quest and get uh, 75 favor, you can go talk to the guy in the marketplace and he'll give you another inventory space for free. So your inventory space is going to be able to support everything. Of course, you're going to buy and sell a lot and like sell and re don't forget to repair your stuff. But that's it, guys. Thank you guys for watching. We are done. Hopefully this guide helped you guys. I know I rambled on for a long time, but this will save you a lot of stress if you just if you watch this and this is the and you're gonna go through this game for the first time. I guarantee you, I just saved you hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and stress and frustration and being just pissed off at yourself for not knowing. And even for people who are learning and like already went up to like a level 8 character and then realize that they can't do anything by themselves because they didn't build their character right, they didn't put the points in right. I'm going to give you guys this one advice. Whatever your max skill is, whatever your focus skill is, max that bitch out. So what that the other skills are low? Your job is to do your job. If you're a, if you're a wizard, max out your freaking whatever gives your wizard the best thing. If you're a barbarian and you need to max out your freaking strength. If you're a fighter, max out your strength. It's fine. As you can see, I maxed out my strength. I maxed out my wisdom. And I was able to walk through everything right now. My bonus is at plus 10. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous for a cleric. To be completely honest, that is ridiculous. Ridiculous, I tell you. But if you're a caster, max out whatever the hell. If you're a bard, bards are actually really crazy. If you're a bard, max out your freaking charisma and max out your strength. Don't worry about the other stuff. You can heal yourself anyways. You can get in, you can get out, you can give yourself boost armor and shit like that. Don't worry about having a little bit more HP. Don't worry about having a little bit more defense. That comes later. You want to worry about killing shit and healing yourself. And healing yourself isn't really that hard because you can buy potions. Unless you're a cleric, then you can just save all your money and not have to worry about buying potions. You can buy yourself a bunch of items, which in turn gets you more money. So the trick to getting more money isn't by having like 5 level 4 characters, no. It's actually having one character at like level 10 because at a level 10 rate, you're going to sell stuff for like thousands of platinum versus like 30, 40, 200 platinum. You're going to be able to get things that sell for a bunch of platinum. You're going to be able to get like really, really good loot. So you're going to have a lot of money to spend. So in turn, if you get one character to like level 8, which is really, really easy to do. It's really easy to do. You can just join groups that are in your level range and just go ham. You can actually do it by yourself if you really wanted to. Like playing one hour a day. That's a lot. That is a lot. Um, and once you get to like a level 8 character. Your next character you can go ahead and just give him like. You can give him money. Or you can go and with your big boy character you can buy like 50 potions of everything. And just transfer over like. Because you can dual box. You can open two clients with the same thing. If you don't know how to do that, just open the game once. Before you log in, open it again. Log in on the same account. You can do that. And you can actually trade with yourself. Which I love about this game. I love that they can do that. Sometimes you crash and stuff like that. But you should be able to trade within yourself. You can even mail yourself stuff. Um, all you do is you go to the mailbox. You send mail. And you can mail yourself money. You can mail yourself equipment. Um, you can do it that way, but personally, I, I think just dual box, just open another client. Um, you can change your settings to really low if your computer isn't good enough to do that. Um, but you can do that. That will go ahead and you can give your character a bunch of money or a bunch of like, a bunch of things that are going to help him get through the, get through the first quest really fast. Like potions of haste are phenomenal for low level characters. If you can give your low level character a hundred potions of haste, done 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 you zerg through everything you just run like a freaking beast you just like you go crazy your attack speed is boosted your speed is your run speed is boosted you just go crazy and people are like damn it how many potions do you have you're like oh i have a level 8 character that pretty much is my bank and then you end up having two characters that are level 8 and guess what you have some money and then by that time you actually have two characters that are viable 
and you can start doing all the quests in whichever one of the two characters that you like or you can delete one and make another account or do whatever the hell you want you can have like five accounts if you really wanted to I recommend you focus on one account and at max have two characters if you're free to play um, your first character can be for first characters I would recommend and these are the ones that I recommend I recommend a cleric because you're gonna be welcome in every party another class that's really good is a paladin I'll probably just do a guide on a paladin after I do something else crazy I'm gonna do another I'm gonna do a crazy guy next probably like that rogue wizard type how to build a rogue wizard um so that's that a paladin is really good and for solo questing you wanna do something other something else like a um what am I looking for here rogues are actually really good at solo questing as well because they get more experience and they get a lot more loot so they get a lot of good stuff now people usually like to start off with the cleric and a rogue on their two things what I would recommend you do is that's a really good idea don't get me wrong but wait on your rogue until your cleric gets you 400 favor points so you can get your rogue to be a drow that will definitely be worth it believe you me you'll have more stats uh, which means your character will be stronger and drows are pretty much elves uh, that get a lot of really really cool stuff and things like that and it'll definitely be worth it so get one character pretty high plus by then you'll have a bunch of money if you follow this guide with your cleric your cleric will be able to solo everything uh, you'll be able to get your favor um, it doesn't it's not the easiest thing to get the favor but if you're gonna play for free go ahead and do that now later on if you wanna get um, money there is a way to get a uh, points and by points you can uh, you can spend points in the DDO store and the way you spend points in the DDO store is you accumulate points by getting favor you can actually go to every every server and do quests until you get to 100 favor that gives you 125 points for that server and they all stack on the same account so you can have your main account if you do it on every single server you end up having more than a thousand points um, I would recommend you buy Delaria's tomb it's an adventure pack it costs about 850 or it costs 850 buy that one the reason I say buy that one is because that one gives you a trinket which gives you plus one to pretty much everything and it gives you five percent more experience gain for every single thing you do that gives you experience now that equivalates to a lot of freaking experience between level you you usually do that at level, like level five and six you get that that's when you do that quest it's like a chain uh, once you do that quest after level six everything from level six and on you're getting five more experience and when you're getting a hundred thousand experience to get to like the, the like levels and stuff like when you're getting like 10 15 20 thousand experience to get to the next level five percent is a lot dude it helps you so much anyway it's guys we're set if you guys want to figure out how to zerg and stuff like that I think I already have a zerg guide with like a crazy ass sorcerer I actually recommend you do it with the berserk with the barbarian because barbarians have an enhancement that they can toggle it's like it costs like five or six points into the tree that gives them fake HP um, it gives you blood HP which is really good once you get that you won't ever die you can just do all the quests and you won't ever die. You might have to do them slowly, but you'll be able to zerk through most of them because you can get the speed boots. Um, but that's for another guide. This guide is done. Hopefully this helped you guys again. Thank you guys for watching. I'm done talking. Later.